Hello again. This is the third video in my series I ended up calling Kiwi Crash Course. In this video, I'm going to add some more functionality to the simple Kiwi app I made in part 1, which I've got displayed again here. If you remember, we have this text Hello displayed with the Kiwi Labor widget, which in turn we can move around because it's placed in a Kiwi Scatter widget that knows how, in how to interpret all that kind of touch or mouse behavior. We also have multi-touch for scaling and rotation, again all handled by, handled by the scatter widget, and it could continue to do that even if instead of hello we had something much more complicated, really any set of Kiwi widgets. Going back to the Python, this is exactly the code I wrote in part one. You can copy it down now if you want to follow along, or I'll put a link to a downloadable version in the video description. So how are we going to change the app? I want to add some more complex behavior. At the moment, it's nice that we can move the text around, but it's all handled by the scatter widget, and it's not clear how we could have widgets actually interact in a useful way. I'll do that by adding a text input, a way of adding text to the app, and then having the label automatically update to show this text instead of just the word hello. So let's import the widgets we need first from kiwi.ux.text input import text input and let's also import a box layout the box layout is another kind of layout like a float layout its job is to place its child widget all in a row either vertically or horizontally it can also size them proportionally for you I'll get to that more in a moment we're going to use this because our app at the moment is very self-contained the float layout contains a scatter the scatter contains a label what we want now is not to add something more to the current app, but to put a text input next door to it, uh, rather than overlapping with it. We can do that by having everything go in one of these box layouts. I'll just use a default one for now. And let's also make a text input. This could also be the default, but I think I set the font size to 150, like the label, just so it's easier to see in this video. So let's now add these to the widget tree. We're going to return the box layout, that's our new root widget that will fill the window, and it's going to contain everything else, which means that we need to oops, add it at the end. We need to add the float layout to the box layout and add the text input to the box layout. So now the box layout is the root widget, it's filling the window. It has a float layout and a text input, and we should be able to demo this and see that in action. Let's see, here we are. So just as expected, on the left we have exactly our old app. Again, the float layout contains a scatter, contains a label, and we can interact with it just like before, no changes. On the right we have our new text input. We can click on that to focus it and type any text we like. So what's wrong with this now? It's nice that we have the text input, but it's kind of large, clearly far, far bigger than the text needs. How about if we aim to put it at the top of the screen rather than the right? And it only needs to be the same height as the line of text, rather than uh, taking up the full height of the window. We also need to make it so that typing this text updates the word hello, rather than at the moment text input just works on its own, and the scatter ignores it completely. So let's get working on that. First of all, let's get our sizing right. I said I wanted the text input at the top of the window, so let's set the box layout to vertical, to, to orientation equals vertical. The default is horizontal, so as you saw, they had widgets on the left and the right rather than the top and the bottom. Let's also set a specific size for the text input. First of all, there's a little Kiwi subtlety here. We need to set the size hint Y to none. This is because of the way the box layout sizes its children. Even if they have a specific size set as a property, if they also have a size hint, the, tech, the box layout will take them and size them proportionally. In this case, they both have a def default size hint of one in both the X and Y directions. So they both have the, so both the float layout and the text input took up half the screen. At the moment, if we hadn't set the size hint Y to none, it would have taken up the top half of the screen instead of the right half. However, now we have set it to none, so we can also set its height manually. Let's set it to 200 pixels, a little larger than the font size, so we can see the line of text. 
and that should take care of having the text input display. In fact, let's also put it before the float widget. So note here the order that I add the widgets is important. Whichever one I add first will be at the top of the screen and the second at the bottom of the screen. So in this case, the text input is first, so it will be at the top. Now we also need to add this behavior so that changing the text of the text input updates the label. Kiwi allows you to do this in a very general way using the bind method. All Kiwi widgets have this, as with several other kind of Kiwi objects, but I'll get to that in the future. The syntax is text to the widget, so in this case a text input dot bind. Text means whenever the text of the text input changes, it calls some function. That could be anything, any function at all. So we could define some function and have it print text changed. And that would mean any time the text of the text input changed at all, any key press, any text entered, uh, even deletion, it will call this function and we'd see Python print text changed out to the console. Now that's not what we actually want. We need to have some more specific behavior of updating the label. So let's do that. And another can handy Kiwi method here, we can call the labels setter for the text property. Again, this is something that all Kiwi widgets and several other Kiwi things have. Setter automatically returns the function whose purpose is to set this text property. So that means whenever the text of the text input changes, it calls this function which sets the text of the label. Obviously, this is very generally useful whenever you want a widget to directly affect another although you can always invent your own function and use that one. Let's also set a default text for the text input. Text equals default. And in fact, let's set the label to match that to start. Though now because of this binding, the label should update when the text input changes rather than just staying constant. So that should be everything. We've sized our text input appropriately. We've bound the text of the text input to change the label. Let's see how it looks. There we are. So as expected, at the top of the screen is our text input. It has a fixed height rather than taking up half the screen. The bottom is the same as before. Now it says default rather than hello, but whatever. But now we can have something more interesting. We can select the text input and change it. And as you can see, because of our binding, this immediately affects the scatter and propagates the change. We can write anything we like. The label is updated. We can still resize it, rotate it, everything we could do before. But with this extra behavior, binding the two widgets together and allowing much more interesting complex behavior. Any work you do where you need more than one widget and want to have them interacting will ultimately involve interactions of this kind. So this is great. We've made a very important step in our use of a Kiwi application in that now we can have widgets interact in far more non-trivial ways than just having an existing widget handle all the behavior. You might think this is getting a bit unwieldy, and I agree. Kiwi has a much better way of uh, describing these widget trees and having widgets interact called the Kiwi language, and I'll cover this directly in the next video. For now, feel free to experiment with this just as before. You can change any of these properties you like and see what happens. Or again, check up online to see how you could change these widgets and in some cases change their behavior quite drastically. You could also replace them with other widgets. For instance, the box layout could be a range of other kind of layouts and you could see how that affects the position and the placement of the text input. Uh, for now though, that's everything. Thanks for watching.